Who is going to carry out the transformations that would make permanent revolution a reality in countries like Egypt and Tunisia? in the year of revolutions. The flames of unrest that swept across the Middle East, from the victory of the Tunisian people in deposing Ben Ali, to the historic and ongoing Egyptian revolution, which has inspired and given hope to millions of ordinary people across the world, from those struggling for freedom in Palestine, all the way to workers here who have hit back against the Tories today. The Egyptians have shown us this year that we can win and that the future is with us. Over. We've seen people organising, people camping out in the style of Tahrir Square so that capitalists now in Barcelona and Athens are trembling in their palaces as well. And in response to the feeding attacks of the Tory scumbags, I was so proud to see workers in this country today really were walking like Egyptians on the picket <laughs> means I can honestly say that as a socialist this is the most exciting year that I've ever been alive which to be honest hasn't been that long. <laughs> That's not just because I've witnessed the resistance on Al Jazeera or in the papers or on Twitter but it's because I have along with thousands of FE students and school students and uni students across the country been a part of the global resistance here in Britain. The confidence that we gained as school students from seeing our strength in numbers when we walked out onto the streets and seeing our strength in defiance and our understanding of the situation collectively meant that school kids and uni students realised the power that they could have over their own lives, over society and hence realised the, the control that we are being completely denied and the lack of control that we had over our own lives in this current system. And the, conf the confidence and anger that this realisation and that the movement generated left led FE and school students to take leadership and it meant that in my college alongside many others with the structure and support that I received from being in a revolutionary organisation, this WP, I, we were able to occupy our sixth form and show that it really, our education belonged to us and that we would put up a fight. So students in waking up Britain, in breaking the cuts consensus, giving a nudge to the giant of the British working class and seeing workers move today with such incredible might on strike today, I felt really proud that us as students had played a role in making that happen. But, um, world that we have been a part of this year does have the power to win and it has the power to create a system where humans produce in order to provide for all and where nobody ever starves to death in a world of plenty and I know um, that this year's Marxism is going to be the place where we can learn and debate and discuss and organise for that alternative and I just hope it's a bloody good one. <laughs> First of all, what a brilliant day this was. I mean, I, mean, I, stood, I stood here on Wednesday and said what a brilliant day last Wednesday was when London Met were out on strike with Unison, with UCU and with our students next to us. I'll tell you what, Unison weren't officially on strike today, but Unison members at London Met were on the picket line with us and on the road. As a 47 year old lecturer, the last 12 months have been the best time of my life as well. We stood with our students in the occupations, on the picket lines, in the demonstrations, in the kettles, and 
and we have fought back and we will continue to fight back. It's been brilliant and let's face it, we are just starting. What is brilliant about all of this, if we look at it, this is the start of our collective awakening. And all of us in this room, and all of the 30,000 on the streets in London, and all of the many thousands throughout the country are starting to feel that possibility. We now know we have the power to really make some changes. Let's look at it. In October, it is now a serious possibility that we will have four to five million workers out on the streets. perfectly achievable prize. And actually, I think that was, I managed to speak on the platform today, I don't know how they managed to let me in, but I did manage to speak on the platform. I spoke last week as well. And I talk about, and I make no bones about it, what we need in this country is a general strike. But let's be quite clear about it. That is not any longer an abstract slogan. It has real resonance and is filled with real possibility and hope. This is our time our moment, our future, and we need to grasp it with both hands, and we need to barge past the inert, the conservative, and the failed ideas of the past. We have to assert our alternative vision. We have to popularize our slogans. We have to build our resistance and spread our ideas of revolt and liberation. We therefore need to put on events like Marxism. It's our university of ideas. We need to produce pamphlets, we need leaflets, we need placards, we need a paper that highlights the struggles of today and has learned the lessons of the past. We need to shout with the loudest of voices on all fronts. And individual socialists need those arms in order to go and win those ideas, in order to help achieve the very things that we have achieved so far and to go further forward. Let's be quite clear. These events today would not have happened without the role of socialists over the last 12 months. We have helped to create this, and we will help to take it forward to victory. That's what it's all about. But those ideas and popularising those ideas are not come cheap. We are not a party of millionaires, but let's face it, why would a millionaire join us when all we want to do is tax them, take the money off them, and put them back on the line with the rest of us. So we're not a party of millionaires. We're a party of ordinary men, women, ordinary workers, ordinary students. Which means, like we did today, we only managed to achieve anything by our collectivity, by our solidarity. And that, unfortunately, and here is the rope, that comes down to collectively we need your money to help us get somewhere further. So, there will be buckets coming round, and actually, let's make it as silent as possible. We have a world to win. Now let's not finance get in the way of winning it. Thank you. Thank you, comrades. I, I think it's quite a rare opportunity to, to travel from one country as uh, it's just facing the general strike and going to another country that's just entering a day of struggle and strike. I was, uh, as I was uh, this morning, I was taking the tube in Athens in order to, to go to the airport. Uh, uh, the people were still coughing and sneezing because of the of the immense amount of tear gas the riot police used yesterday against the strikers. And I was, uh, when I came to the London Tube, I saw uh, a group of students with placards, uh, social worker placards, demanding a general strike. So I, I think it's uh, more and more signs uh, show us that we are, uh, that this struggle we are giving is an international struggle. It's yes. a struggle all, all around the world against austerity and against the, the system. It's a, it's, a global it's a global crisis, that's why it's a, it's a global resistance against the cuts and against the, the system. You, you can see that in the, in the way the, the movement from Egypt uh, rushed into Spain and then to Greece. And you can see the, fir the very first days of the occupation of Syntagma Square in the, in the center of Athens 
the many Tunisian, Egyptian and Spanish flags uh, carried by the people that showed this international solidarity and this international dimension they, they, they considered to have in their, in their struggle. So, uh, uh, allow me to bring you greetings from the strikers, the, the, the people who, stroke, who have also organized the 48th general strike in, in Greece in Tuesday and Wednesday. It was the first 48th general strike uh, after 20 years in, in Greece. And I also bring you greetings from the, the hundreds of thousands of people that have been occupying and demonstrating in Sindagma Square in the, in the last 40 days. And many of them, in the last 48 hours, they have been street fighting against the riot police and they didn't let them evacuate the, the main square in front of the, of the parliament. I bring you greetings especially from the 500 injured demonstrators from uh, yesterday's uh, demo. They had to seek medical advice, they had, they had to go to the hospitals because of, because of, the, of the tear gas, because of the transients. Uh, the, the, the riot police sur surrounded the headquarters of the primary school teachers union in Athens and uh, <coughs> hit very brutally an anti-capitalist member of the executive of the uh, primary school teachers union in, uh, in Greece. Many, many trade unions were beaten brutally uh, yesterday. But, uh, and, uh, and also the, the NSWP banner was uh, burned by the riot police, by a, a canister thrown just over the heads of the, of the comrades uh, yesterday in the, in the demo. But, you know, all this brutality is not so much a surprise uh, coming from a government that organizes brutality with the austerity measures. What was a surprise is that after all these attacks, after all this violence by the riot police, the people were just taking a breath and going back to, to the square to uh, reoccupy it. It was, uh, I think, we have to explain all this militancy by seeing that the people in Greece are not only fed up with uh, austerity, but they are fed up with uh, an austerity that uh, doesn't work. The, um, last year, Greece took a so-called bailout of 110 billion euros from the IMF and the European Union. And now, one year later, they say, they say that uh, this money didn't do anything and they need 110 billion uh, more. And in these 12 months, we've seen the unemployment rising up going to 22%. Uh, we've seen the median wages cut by around 15 to 20 percent. We've seen a, a, a complete disaster as far as hospitals and schools are uh, concerned. The, they are merging 3,000 schools all around the country. Actually, what, what they do, they're trying to, to get rid of many of the, of the schools. One of the first schools they tried to merge and uh, get rid of in Athens was the only multicultural school we have in Athens. One of the, uh, another school that was merged it was one, uh, the only one, uh, the only school for people with uh, hearing disabilities. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it, it, it's a barbarity. It's barbarism. What's, uh, what's, uh, what the system organizes and in order to, in order to do what? That's, that's the question. Where do, they took, this last the wages, and now they're saying that they want one up to three percent more from the wages of the workers in order to give it to a special uh, fund for the unemployment. And at the same law, they are slashing the unemployment benefit. So wh wh where is all this money going? And it's, uh, the answer is that it doesn't have to do anything with, uh, with the people or the workers in Greece. It, it's, uh, it's a bailout for the bankers, and it's, uh, it's quite clear. Uh, Actually, the, the, the vice president of the government, uh, the Greek government, last, uh, last week uh, had an interview with a Spanish journalist and he asked him, uh, what would you do, what would it mean if you stopped paying, if you had stopped paying the debt and you didn't give all this money to, to the bankers? And, and he, he had a shocking answer. He said, uh, the next day would be quite extraordinary. The, the banks would be surrounded by thousands of people demanding their money. 
then we, we had to, we should have, we would bring out the, the army and use the tanks around the, around the banks in order to protect them. The police wouldn't be enough. At the same time, we would, we would have revolts in several parts of, all around the country. And several people would be forced, would be forced to suicide by jumping from the balconies. So, what they're afraid of, and the are out of the banks, is an Argentina movement, movement in Greece, and at the same time, a Lehman Brothers movement for, for, for the whole of Europe. They're afraid that Greece will bring to the fore the, all the, the, the depth of the crisis that has hit not only the south of Europe, but uh, the whole continent. So, I, I think I have to bring you some, some information useful for you uh, as far as the movement is concerned in, in, in Greece. Because, you know, the, the, the death of the, of the labor movement in Greece has been pro proclaimed many times. Uh, I think it was 11th of May when the Financial Times were saying that uh, the, the, Greek, the Greeks are now tired of protesting. <laughs> one, one, one month later, the uh, 5th of June, we had the general strike again, and it was the biggest general strike ever. So it's. Uh, <laughs> in order, in order not, to, not to fall into, into this trap, uh, we, should, we should have in mind, keep in mind, that the, the struggle against austerity is not uh, a linear struggle. It has uh, ups and downs, it has ebbs and flows. So, what, what, what's important through this period of, uh, of, uh, of time is that in every, in every movement forward, we, new layers of workers, new layers of people, new layers of militants have to gain experience and be more capable of organizing their workplace, organizing, organizing from below, organizing the rank and file. And we have such kind of experience in, in Greece in the, in, in the last uh, months. Let me bring you some examples. In the, the contract workers in uh, the city of Athens were, uh, were about to be laid off by the mayor. And uh, there was a special meeting of the city, of the city council. The, the contract workers organized a demo outside of the city hall. And the mayor didn't go because he said, I cannot decide under the pressure of the workers. And what the, uh, what, the, what the contract workers did was, okay, so it's, uh, it's bad for you, you're not here, we're going to occupy the, the city hall. And they, they stayed in the center of Athens with an occupied, uh, with the mayor not being able to enter the, the, the city hall for 26 days. And what they, what they did, What they did was not only that they managed to force the courts to say that the, the decision of the mayor was illegal, but they made the workplace, they turned it into a, into a center of organization of militancy for others, for others, for other workers. Teachers, uh, civil servants were going to, to the occupied city hall to show their solidarity and organize together with the other, with the other workers. The media workers in the, pri in the private sector, they have been under very heavy pressure to, to have uh, a series of layoffs. They forced their uh, bureaucracy, their uh, right wing, Tory, Tory union bureaucracy, to organize a four day strike. And when they were in the, in the first demo, what they did is they, they surrounded the, the, the leadership of the union and told them, we're not going to march if you don't decide here in front of us that the, this strike will not be the last one. And the, the, the union was, uh, was forced to bow and say, okay, we're going to have more strikes after, after, after this one. There are more examples. The, the, the hospital doctors went to have a meeting with the, with the Minister of Health. And when they found out that he was not in the ministry, they stormed him in the ministry and occupied him. And, and stayed there for, for more than two weeks. And what, 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 yeah. what, and what happened is that uh, at the same days there was a, there was a big uh, strike in the transport. 
the, the bus drivers who are having their marks and they decided that we should not go to the Ministry of Transport, we should go to the Ministry of Health in order to, to meet with the hospital doctors that, that are occupying. And the two, and the two demonstrations merged in, in front of the occupied uh, ministry. And that was solidarity, worker solidarity in action. And more and more examples like this are the explanation of all this militancy we, we're seeing in the general strikes in Greece. It's not just decisions coming from above. It's that in every, in every moment of the movement, there is a layer, there is a minority some, at some points that organize the rank and file and say we have to, we have to gain from this experience and, uh, and, uh, and go forward. And this is the point, this is the explanation how we have official, official polls organized by right-wing televisions that say that now less than 10%, it's, a, it's about 9.5% of the people in Greece, of the general population, say that uh, the, the austerity measures of the government have uh, are a, any kind of solution to, to, to the crisis. It's, it's a government that cannot convince even 10% of the, of the population. And 25.6% of the general population have uh, said to the polls that they have a more radical answer. They say we should stop paying this debt. We should nationalize the, the banks. We should keep Put them under workers' control. It's a, it's a massive radicalization coming from from uh, these struggles. And of course, th this massive radicalization needs a radical left, a revolutionary left to organize, uh, organize and uh, go even more forward. So the, the, the last thing is that uh, <coughs> the stakes are very high. Not only in Greece, where it's obvious, but uh, everywhere. The, um, the next prime minister was in television last week, next Greek prime minister. It's uh, the equivalent of Fatsu we have in, in, in this. And he was asked, uh, what do you think? Could you, would you, would, would, should we let all these demos in front of the parliament, uh, even if these demos may be able to, to stop the parliament from voting for the, for the measures? Uh, he, he said, uh, no, we should stop these demos. What, what if uh, this means that we have dead protesters? The, the general stuff. And he said, why not? Why not have the, the, the protesters? Uh, what, are these, what are these people? Uh, what do these people want? Maybe they want to occupy the Winter Palace, like in the Russian Revolution. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he said, that's the equivalent of a revolution. So we, we have to stop them uh, by any means necessary. So we have to take these things for granted. From our side, we have to take these things for granted. And to answer clearly, get that yes, it's a revolution what we are talking about. It's a revolution against the system, system that puts profit before people. And this is the time that we, this uh, prospect is not something that we're just discussing, but it's part, it's part of the massive discussion and massive organization and, and it's part of the, of, the, of the debates inside the movement that yes, it's not, we're not seeking for a way to fix the system but we're seeking a way to, to overthrow the system and every single struggle we organize is, is a step forward to this direction. Thank you. Well comrades, who can say now that the working class in this country is dead? <laughs> strikes and working class action are for Greece and for Spain and for Portugal and uh, Portugal and for places uh, like that. Nobody can make those kinds of statements anymore. It's the second time I've been on strike today and the first time I went on strike I thought it was the best day of my life but it was not the best day of my life. Today was the absolute best day of my life. It was bigger, it was more militant, it was more unified. Than, uh, than, than the strike I was on before, and I think anybody that was there today would say that it was more, that we're bigger, more militant, more unified than strikes that we've seen in this country for a generation. And they may say, they may say 
the strikes of the Greece, the strikes of the Spain, the strikes of the Portugal. But we in this country, our workers in this country, have got more in common with Greek workers than they have with any Tory top. <laughs>
Mary. But we have to start to say, don't we, that we want Prentice to turn those words into action. شعبنا في مصر وثورة مصر لصغار انجلترا وصغار العالم. Greetings from uh, the Egyptian people and the Egyptian revolution to the revolutionaries here in Britain and in the world. تعلمون أن مصر في زمن مضى كانت خاضعة للاستعمار العسكري الانجليز المستعمرون آه الانجليز كانوا يحتلون عسكريا مصر. In the past Egypt was subject to British military occupation. الاشتراكيون اليساريون الثوريون الان يحتلون قلوب المصريين. But now the socialists and revolutionaries they occupy the hearts of Egyptians. <تصفيق> هذا وضع طبيعي أن يلتقي المستعمرون ويتحالف المستعمرون وعلى الجانب الآخر تلتقي قوى الثورة وتتحالف وتتعانق معا ضد المعسكر الأول المستعمر. Because this is a natural state of affairs because on the one hand we have an alliance of uh, of imperialism and the forces of, uh, against the revolution that are trying to stop us. But on the other hand, we have an alliance of revolutionaries that is bringing together the people who want to fight for a revolution. عندما وقفتم ضد احتلال العراق في مظاهرات ضخمة تعترض على احتلال القطر العربي العراقي. When you here in Britain stood against the occupation of Iraq and stood against the occupation of a part of the Arab lands. عندما وقفتم ضد الصلاح الصهيوني ومع شعبنا العربي في فلسطين المحتلة ضد العدوان الصهيوني وضد الحصار. When you stood against the Zionist enemy, which is oppressing our Palestinian people, when you stood with the Palestinian people. عندما وقفتم معنا اثناء الثوره امام السفاره المصريه لكي تناصروا هذه الثوره. When you came and stood with us during the Egyptian Revolution in front of the Egyptian Embassy here in London. واصبحتم طرفا اصيلا معنا في هذا النص. When you took part in these actions in order to bring victory. اثبتتم لنا وللعالم اننا نستطيع ان نبني عولمه انسانيه. بين قوى الانتاج في العالم بين العمال في العالم عولمه انسانيه تتصدى للعولمه المعسكره المتوحشه التي تقودها الولايات المتحده الامريكيه. When we saw that we knew that there was an alternative globalization, a globalization of the people who produce things in, in our global society against the globalization of militarism, against the globalization of the heart of the system which is in uh, which is in America and the heart of the imperialist system. قاعدة متقدمة للإمبريالية الأمريكية في بلادنا. And this imperialist system, which was represented in the Arab region by the Zionist state, which is a forward base, a forward military base for imperialism. أثبتوا بذلك أثبتوا وتثبتون أن وحدة النضال الإنساني ممكنة. 
أن اتحادنا في مواجهة قوى الشر والعدوان والعسكرة والاحتكارات والاستغلال أمر ممكن. It showed us that it was possible to have unity of human struggle against this militaristic globalization, that it was possible to stand united against oppression and exploitation on a global level. Yeah. <laughs> And when I saw the meeting that took place just before this session, in which there were so many people following with such interest the details of what's happening in, 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 in the Egyptian revolution. When we heard people discuss in this session about how the revolution wasn't a surprise, it was something where the roots of it went back many through many years of struggle. This shows that Egyptian workers were striking just like we saw the wonderful strike today in the streets of London. The, the thousands of strikes that Egyptian workers took part in in the five, six years before the revolution. These strikes which won economic demands for many, many workers. Which really represented genuine victories for the working class. It was out of these strikes that even three years before the revolution we were able to build the first independent workers union for many, many years in Egypt. What was so important about this was that even three years before the revolution took place, we were able to demonstrate to people in Egypt that it was possible to stand in the face of Mubarak's brutal police state and win things through our own efforts. That it gave hope to people. <laughs> And it was the strikes that workers carried out over that, over that period before the revolution that encouraged people to go out into the revolution, gave them hope that they could too win victory. تكوين النقابات قبل الثورة انفتح واسعا الآن في مصر بعد قيام الثورة وبعد إعلان قيام الاتحاد المصري للنقابات المستقلة يوم 30 يناير في ميدان التحرير. And because we set up independent unions, we won the space to form independent unions before the revolution. We have now seen many, many independent unions formed after the revolution. We set up the first meeting of the independent. The Union Federation took place in, in Tahrir Square on the 30th of January. This, the, <coughs> this, these revolutionary, the, these class demands that workers have put, have put forward have gone, mean, mean that workers' demands are at the heart of the revolution, that they express what people want to see happen through the revolutionary process. And in fact, even just a week after Mubarak fell, 
those workers were putting forward the demand. We have to go back to Tahrir. We have to meet again in Tahrir the next Friday to follow up on the demands that have been that have been that have been put forward. That was workers were demanding that. And then, مسألة الثورة والثورة ليست فعلا فجائيا يحدث كالوميد وينتهي ولكن الثورة الآن في مصر تتقدم لإزاحة فلول النظام في مبارك في آلاف المبارك موجودين على قمة المصانع كانوا مسؤولون عن تخسرها من أجل بيعها في آلاف المبارك موجودين في المؤسسات في الثورة بتزيح بتستهدف من أهدافها بإزاحة بقية الحلف الطبقي الذي كان يحكم بلادنا and now that Mubarak has fallen, we actually see there is still an ongoing revolution against the thousands of Mubaraks who run our factories, who run our public institutions. I know oh, yeah. the revolution is continuing against the class alliance that is, uh, is governing our country. أول أمس حصلنا على حكم بحل المجالس الشعبية المحلية المزورة. Only two days ago, we managed to force through, uh, we managed to, to achieve through pressure from below, the, the government decided to dissolve the, um, the, the local councils which were uh, from, full of people from the old regime and were elected fraudulently or appointed, uh, appointed in, a corrupt, in a corrupt way. They've now been dissolved and that's because of our, uh, of our pressure of the continuing revolution. الليلة التي أتيت الليلة قبل الماضية التي أتيت فيها إلى لندن خرجت قوات البلطجة الموالية للنظام السابق لكي تعبر عن رفضها لحل هذه المجالس المزورة. But just the day before I came, I, I came here, we saw the forces of the folks who were supporting the old regime, supporting the counter-revolution, went out to try and show their opposition to this decision to dissolve the, the, the local councils. نفس الفعل نفس السلوك ارتكبته يوم حل مباحث امن الدوله. Using the same old methods of the police of the, of the, of the police state that they always used to use, used against us. وعند كل انتصار القوى المضاده للثوره ترتكب افعال هدفها تيئيس الناس من الثوره او عرضتهم عن استكمال المشروع الثوري. And we see this that every that we take forward, the counter-revolutionary forces are still, are still there trying to stop us from completing the, the tasks of the revolution. And right at the moment we're in the middle of the struggle to dissolve the old Mubarak Union, the trade union federation that was part of the state and the head of which is now in jail because he organised the thugs to attack the protesters in Tahrir Square in the Battle of the Camel. في الاتحاد العمال المزور بالكامل ولكن ايضا يستغل في تزوير البرلمان والمجالس المحليه وكافه الانتخابات التي تتم تتم في بلادنا. And they didn't, the old union federation and the, 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 its president didn't just play a role in attacking the revolution, they were also part of the system of, uh, great, of uh, intervening in the, in the old, in the elections to parliament to make sure that the government candidates always win, they would bring their thugs onto the streets to intimidate people. They were absolutely, absolutely part of the old regime. <laughs> The Egyptian revolution is not the property of any particular party or organization or even, or even a, a, a union. It was something that was, uh, came out of massive popular explosion of spontaneous protests, not something that was led by political parties. التي 
تنتج لا زالت تنتج ثمارها وتحقق اهدافها في الثوره حتى الان and that popular protest that huge pressure from below is still going on that the revolution is still the popular revolution from below is still continuing يجب ان يتعلم الحكام من رياح التغيير التي تهب على وطننا العربي وتنتقل الان للعالم كله يجب ان يتعلموا درس and that lesson must be learned by rulers of the world over that smell of freedom that's coming from from Dakar Square and from the Egyptian Revolution is something that rulers of the world over need to take notice of. يجب ان يجب ان يستمعوا لمطالب اضراب اليوم يجب ان يتاكدوا ان العمال لن يدفعوا فاتوره خساره الراسماليه على موائد الراسماليه في الازمه الماليه الاخيره The strike today has to show, shows very clearly that workers will not play the bill for the economic crisis فاتورة الأزمة المالية العالمية من أحدثوها ولن ندفع فيها قرشا واحدا مش عارف ده شكله ده ايه Those who will pay the price for the economic crisis on a global scale are those who made it and those who have not so far paid the same or the بشعار نردده معا. I'm going to finish with a with a slogan and I want you to join me. ثورة ثورة حتى النصر. ثورة ثورة حتى النصر. ثورة ثورة حتى النصر. ثورة حتى النصر. feels like there's something in the air, doesn't there? It's not often that you really feel like we're part of making history, is it? When you listen to the speakers on the platform tonight, and all of us who must have been part of this tremendous, spectacular day in Britain, it really feels like something has changed. In 2011, we're only just about halfway through. It's already been an extraordinary year, hasn't it? We could never have predicted. Did we stand here last year and predict what has happened in the last few months? Of course we didn't, because the struggle can take us by surprise. And I think what is so significant about what's happened is for so long we've talked of wars, about economic crisis, about the financial crash, about the cuts, about austerity. We're talking about the things that are happening to us, we're talking about forces that feel too big to change, too powerful to resist. But this year has changed all that. Now, for the first time in a long time, we're talking about the impact of the self-conscious actions of millions of ordinary people across the globe. Now we're talking not about what's being done to us, but what we're doing back. Uh, and I think what has been... What has been the defining event that has changed that? What has changed all this? It's the revolutions, isn't it? The revolutions first in Tunisia, and that alone would have been historic to have got rid of Ben Ali. That alone would have been. But then followed by all the more important, the size, the importance of Egypt, the political importance for the regimes in the West that we want to get rid of, held up for years by the US, the Egyptian revolution. And it was a struggle of people like Kamal and his members and millions of ordinary Egyptians who defied the most brutal repression that has inspired workers and the poor everywhere. I mean, they've put revolution on the map, haven't they? They've made revolution something real for millions across the world. And I think... I think... When I, I mean, I was lucky enough to be in Tahrir Square and in, in, in Cairo to report for Socialist Worker on the events there. And really, you know, to be a witness to those events, to be a witness to seeing ordinary people shake off the shackles and change of decades of really the most brutal regime, to see women at the fore of it, 
something, you know, I've done meetings on and talked about anything, but to see it happening with your own very eyes, there is absolutely nothing like it. Because when you see people go into struggle, when you see them not being the objects of history, but being the subjects of history, there is nothing like it that you will ever see. Because then you see the self-organization. Then you see the imagination. Then you see the ability of people to show genuine solidarity to people around them that perhaps they wouldn't have passed in the street. Their lives would have been so different and so separate. We saw something different. And then I was lucky enough to go back. Go back the day after Mubarak fell. What an evening that was. It was a sea of the most gigantic flags. You were suddenly in darkness when these gigantic flags went over your heads. The fireworks, the joy, the sense of liberation was palpable in the air as millions, millions across Cairo and across the country took to the streets in days and days of celebrations. And really, we have to, we're almost getting used to the idea now, but I think we have to remind ourselves this was a murderous dictator. It wasn't an exaggeration. We use the word maybe too much, but this was a murderous dictator backed by the US who had ruled for over three decades and certainly thought he was going to continue for several more and then pass it down to his two sons. And yet, in 18 glorious days, the ordinary people brought him down. It is the most tremendous achievement. And isn't it lovely... Isn't it just some sweet justice? There's a little bit of sweet justice that his sons are now languishing in one of his own prisons. <laughs> and, and Hosni Mubarak himself has been charged with the murder of demonstrators. But unfortunately, so far, he's avoided prison because a medical committee assessed him and they examined the patient, this is their quote, in his intensive care room and found that he is clearly frail and depressed and cannot leave the bed without assistance. Now, Kamal, you have a... This is your fault. <laughs> you have made Hosni Barak so depressed he can't get out of bed. <laughs> and... It's not... It's no surprise he's depressed, is it? His world's been turned upside down. But I think the fact is, what we've got to recognize is what the Egyptian people did. They've opened up a new era of revolutions in the world, and the world will never, ever be the same again. And we owe them. We owe them a tremendous debt for this, don't we? All around the world. And how, how are we going to repay them? How are we going to repay that debt? How do we offer them our solidarity? Well, when I was in Cairo three weeks ago... Um, several socialists from Canada and around Europe, we met with some revolutionary socialists in Cairo in their office. No air conditioning, sweaty, hot, lots of old papers piled up, leaflets, pictures of Tahrir Square all around the walls. It was absolutely inspiring. And we said to them, after we talked about what they did and the, their paper and everything else, they said, what can we do? What can we do to help? And it was translated. And then they laughed and looked at each other and said back in unison, and it was translated back for us, Make a revolution in your own country. Yeah. Now, we're not there yet. We are not there yet. But I think today shows we're making a very good start. Because we're part of the same process. Let's not have anybody try to tell us that Britain is different. Because today marks a turning point. And there's been others. The student protests were a turning point. We trashed our ruling party's headquarters. We didn't quite burn it down like you did in Cairo, but we tried. <laughs> the 26th of March demonstration was another turning point, but today was different. Because it wasn't today, it was the concrete evidence of why we as socialists, as revolutionary socialists, argue the working class has the power to change the world. When workers go on strike, things stop. When workers unite, nothing can stop them. And you look across the country today, wasn't it magnificent to see civil service workers with teachers and lecturers in Birmingham and Doncaster and Southampton, council workers came out together as well. Cities came to a halt and people clapped the Birmingham strikers as they marched down the street. The solidarity was fantastic. The unity was something. And I agree with the speakers that spoke before. This unity was something the Socialist Workers' Party played an enormous role. We fought hard for that. This was hard fought for unity, but it made the difference today because this is a day that has absolutely transformed the working class movement in Britain and set us on a different thing. And tell you what, the Tories, they hated it, didn't they? They tried everything to stop us. 
The idea that Cameron was pleading with you all to not go on strike today. I mean, as if you're going to listen to him. I mean, the headline actually that said in the standard, it was all about strike not as big as everybody thought and everything else, says number 10. Like we're going to take anything from them. They tried to split and divide them. They tried to split and divide the unions. They're trying to split and divide and say the private sector workers are the ones paying for the public sector pensions. They talked about making parents scabs, didn't they? And they talked about how much they cared. The children were losing a day's education. They didn't worry about that when they shut every school in Britain when two privileged parasites decided to get married the other month. They didn't care about it then. And that, that rag... That rag, they, that rag they call a newspaper... I don't know if any of you have seen it. We get it in social worker offices to keep an eye on what the other side say. That's Rag, the sun, called what was happening the beginning of a summer of hate. Well, that's not what I saw today. What I saw today was everything that is positive about our class and our movement. And some things are back. Not a summer of hate, but some other things beginning with S. Solidarity is back. Strikes are back. Struggle is back. And that's something to celebrate. Because, because we, in the socialist worker offices, the journalists who were taking the reports, everywhere from Truro to Aberdeen, reports flowing in, and they were still flowing in when I left, left the office at six. The, so, the people that didn't cross the picket lines, the GMB that refused to cross the picket lines in Birmingham, the Unison um, women didn't cross the picket line in Ackland Burley in North London, right across the board, people saying, we are going to stand with you and why are we not on strike with you? That's what happened. We've counted it up. It looks in the list, we'll put it on the website, that up to 100,000 or more across the country march in separate protests and rallies in every town and city. It is a tremendous movement. It is something that we have not seen in a lifetime. And I think when we see our class on the move, we then have to look at the other side because they do pretend the working class is dead, don't they? They say the unions are dinosaurs and everything else. And the Tories just thought they could come along and smash us and cut everything and rip the heart off out of everything that we hold dear, out of our movement, out of the idea of collective responsibility, out of the welfare state. They thought they could just come and do it because the working class was dead and the unions were not going to fight. But when we go back to work next week, when we go back to work after Marxism, some of you will have to go back tomorrow, I think we have to be clear. The working class isn't dead. Today, we stuck one on them and we want to celebrate that. Because, you see, they wouldn't be so hysterical if we didn't matter, would they? You know, why would they, you know, why would they make such a fuss in all their papers and make all these speeches if we didn't make any difference? But the thing is... We do know that one day is not enough. We know the scale that we're going to do, need to do to win. And Nikos, you know, we've seen what's happened with the Greek workers. We can see that you've had general strike after general strike and still they want to push through the most dreadful austerity. But what you're doing is beginning to pose a different question, not just about being against the cuts, but about who runs society. And we can see in Greece how a struggle against Cuts and austerity can transform into a debate about what sort of society do we need. Because I think we have to ask that question right now. How long are we going to put, let this carry on? Generation after generation facing war, crisis, poverty, fascism. And make no mistake in Britain today, the fascists pose a clear and present danger. We see what they're going to do in Tower Hamlets in September. And I urge every one of you to come on the demonstration in September. The stakes are high, not just here, but across the world. We have seen what the ruling class will do to hang on to power. We've seen it in North Africa. We've seen it in the Middle East. So we know the stakes are high. But we're not starting from scratch. We have a fantastic tradition of people fighting back here. And when you look at what three quarters of a million people did in Britain today, think what it would look like if four million came out. Think what it would look like if we have mass strikes on a scale that we want. And this is neither common sense. General strike. It's not that alien to many workers now, is it? They all say, why don't we all come out together? It makes sense. It's a logic. And that's what we've got to fight for. That's what we've got to fight for in the autumn. That's what we've got to bend every muscle to do to make sure in the autumn it's not just coordinate strikes amongst a few unions. So we say to the other unions, we say to Dave Prentice and Len McCluskey and the like, we need your unions in this fight. That's the only way we can win. And I think we have a demand. 
We have a demand that comes out of today, which is name the day. Name the day when we can all come out and bring down this government. We can shake them to their boots, but we have to name a day that we can all get behind. And, and when we've named that day, I've got another slogan for you. This is what I think we should be saying. I think we should be saying, all out, stay out. Because that is what is going to take. Because if we're going to win, if we're going to win, and this is about winning, this is not about protesting and just expressing our dissatisfaction with what they're doing. This is about winning. We have to escalate and we have to get organized. And this is what we believe in the SWP. We believe in the power of workers and ordinary people to challenge the very system we live under, not just to stop the bad things, but to create a very different sort of society. And I think we're going to need nothing short of a revolution to do that. And I think that makes sense of people today than it wouldn't have made sense a year ago or even six months ago. Because for years we've written about and read about and talked about revolutions. And we talk about Russia in 1917, and we should. But today we are seeing real, living, breathing revolutions that people can relate to, sweeping away decades of brutal regimes. And these revolutions are still going on. They're not events. They are processes. We can see in Egypt that it's deepening and growing, and we see that people are still struggling across the region. And this will be a thread going through Marxism, a thread from the Egyptian revolutionaries themselves, from Kamal and a revolutionary socialist Sameh who flew in today from Cairo to talk to us this weekend. And one of the threads that they're giving us is the importance of organization. And that is what we're about in the SWP, being organized. Because, you know, you don't get things happen without being organized. Non-members in this room, you've probably seen us a lot, haven't you, around the place? Our placards, our paper sales on high streets, on picket lines, on demos, we're everywhere. Oh, we hope we are. We support every struggle. We offer solidarity to every struggle. But we don't do it just because we want to get rid of the cuts or stop the EDL, though we do. We don't want to do it just because we want to beat the Tories. We want a different world. We want to get rid of a system that breeds racism, fascism, poverty, and all the rest of it. That is what we want, a socialist society. No less. I'm not going to be satisfied with less than a socialist society. And I think that it seems... I think that a socialist society seems, well, certainly more vital, but more possible today than it has done for a very long time. And I think if we're going to get there, we have to look around and say, we need an organization. Now, I know there's some people who got involved in struggles recently who say, oh, we don't need parties. You know, they're all the same. They want to boss you around and all the rest of it. Well, we're a very different party in the SWP because we think every one of our members is a leader. Every one of our members can make a difference in their workplace or their college or their school because that's what being a socialist, that's what being a revolutionary means. And when the Tories say, we're all in it together, we have to say, I agree with uh, Jess when she says this, we're not in it, in it together with a bunch of millionaire public school boys, are we? But I tell you who we are in it together with. We're in it together with the teachers and firefighters in Wisconsin. We're in it together with the indignados who occupied the squares in Spain. We're in it together with the strikers across Greece and those who are occupying Syntagma Square. We're in it together with those factory workers who are defying a brutal regime in China to go out in the streets in southern China against their bosses. And of course, we are in it together with those making the revolutions across Africa and the Middle East. We are in it together with every one of those struggling across the world. And now we are going into our own fight, the like of which we won't have seen in at least a generation. So I'll end with unsh unashamedly addressing a question to all of those in the room who are not in the SWP. Are you going to join us in that fight? Are you going to join the revolutionaries? I hope you will. I mean, I think this Marxism is a tremendously important Marxism, isn't it? I think it's going to be a very special event. I think we're going to have brilliant debates and discussion and the speakers we've got from all over the world. But then we have a task on our hands, don't we? We're going to have to get out and get stuck in. So I say to you, all of you out there that perhaps aren't in the party yet, aren't in an organization yet, join us. Join us tonight. Don't waste any time. Because, comrades, this is our time. This is our time. We have a world to win. And I'll translate what Kamal was shouting at the end of his uh, speech in Arabic. And I think it's our slogan for the week. Revolution, revolution until victory in London and in Egypt. Revolution. Join us tonight, comrades. Thanks very much.